This is Gene Bohensky from Real to Real Warehouse, and I figured I'd make a short video describing all the different tape failure modes that I've uncovered uh, during the years that I've been working with tapes. The first one we've covered on a separate video, which is Sticky Shed Syndrome. I'm not going to talk about it too much here, but that's the most common one out there. This is where a lot of the studio tapes and tapes go sticky, and you need to bake them uh, in order to get, uh, you know, to be able to use them again. I pointed out in that video that the baking really works well for specific brands, particularly Ampex and, and um, Scotch tapes, and they don't necessarily work with, with other formulations uh, and brands. The next failure mode I want to talk about is a failure mode with acetate tapes. Acetate tapes is made from cellulose acetate backing, and there's a couple of ways they fail. Uh, they, they, they dry up, and they also, they also can turn into, into vinegar, to acetic acid. Uh, they found that was a problem because in the olden times, I say olden times, they used to sell metal tape canisters uh, that they used for film and for tapes. And they found that uh, the tape would turn to this acid and it would corrode out the, the, the metal um, holder. So they, they stopped, um, they actually stopped uh, storing tapes that way. In fact, the best way to store an acetate tape is with a cardboard box, so it breathes. Uh, but acetate tapes, when they fail, uh, they can be unplayable, uh, they can wind poorly, they can snap during playing a lot. So, in general, they're, they're a, a bear to work with, especially if you're trying to transfer, transfer material off of old acetate tapes. It can be a problem. Sometimes the tape is so wavy you need to physically force the tape against the head to get it to play right. Uh, I don't really uh, recommend using uh, those tapes again. Although I have some Scotch 111 that has seemed to aged well. It seems that Scotch and audio tape, whatever they were using for acetate backing, seems to last longer than any of the other brands. I have a problem with, with acetate tapes. I, I've, I've come across a whole bunch of Sony acetate tapes that are, that are just terrible. They're just virtually all unusable. So, um, so I, w I would generally not use them. The next failure mode uh, has been referred to as soft binder syndrome or squealing, tapes that squeal across the heads. Uh, and it's thought that there's something that happens to the lubricant on these tapes that causes that squealing to occur. I've often tried to find certain ways to play them, and I've, I've, I surmise there's also a couple other reasons why the squealing might occur, and I'm going to just talk about them. You know, if you take a look at a, at a, at a tape deck like this, um, it's a later design where the tape is threaded across the heads. This is a dual capstan deck. Actually, there's a very slight um, speed difference between these capstans in, in order to create a tension across the heads, right? So you have the dual, tas tas uh, dual capstan creating tension. Another type of recorder has the back tension from, from the way that, that the tape is looped where there's a single cap stand, you have the back tension from another way. Some of the older machines, that's not the way they use them at all. You actually had a pressure pad, like a cassette, right? You actually had a little arm with a piece of felt that pushed the uh, tape on the head. They got away from that, but some of the older machines, another interesting machine, the old Rebox machines, uh, they actually have like uh, a little metal, a piece of metal that pushes the tape against the heads. Uh, I surmise that the that the squealing has somewhat to do with the way the tape to head contact is created on that machine. I've well, I've actually fixed that problem uh, during some transfers by changing the way the tape is looped here so that there isn't that much tension on the head in order to get a decent playback. Um, other things people have tried is to play them cold. Other things people have tried is to add like some new finish wax lubricant. I actually have some tests here. New finish is a car wax. If you add some turpentine to the to to the new finish and you shake it up, 
you can get that to separate out and separate out the lubricant and then use that for um, lubricating the tape. That has worked. Uh, there are some tapes that are really, w really well known for squealing. Uh, there is uh, an audio tape slash capital Q15, which is known for squealing. There's some Scotch Dyna range that has been known to squeal in certain batches. A lot of the Sony tapes, SLH and PR150, those squeal. Uh, there's a bunch of BASF tapes that were made uh, in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. The uh, Ferro Super LH and um, uh, Studio series that seem to, to succumb to squealing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an issue that's out there. Uh, I don't know if it's getting worse, but some tapes don't play and uh, can't be helped. So, uh, But I think you can lubricate them. The other one that we're finding more and more of as tapes age is that uh, the lubricant dries and forms a white powder. I call that white powder syndrome. There's a bunch of tapes that that, that occurs to, specifically the later TDK GX LX tapes and some of the SA tapes. I think it's also happening to some of their cassettes, which is alarming people. Uh, those suffer from white powder syndrome. I've seen some lots of Scotch 207 and 206 from Japan have that, as well as some of the Sony SLH. And the Sony SLH is a classic. I mean, you might have three failure modes with one tape. You might get binder failure, squealing, and white powder syndrome in one tape, and sometimes even sticky shed. So uh, I don't know what Sony was doing, but some of their tapes in the in the 70s and 80s were just were just really known for a lot of problems. I've often noticed that also there's some white residue that is formed on Agfa PE series and also uh, the BASF LH series. I don't think it's enough to cause a concern. I don't think it's enough to stop people from using it, but I would make people aware that those tapes, they're still excellent, but they might shed a little bit more than, than others. Uh, it's important with any tape equipment that you're always cleaning the heads because shedding is natural. Uh, that's another failure mode that we want to talk about uh, to round this out is tape shedding. Um, shedding doesn't mean the tape is going bad. You know, the early tapes that didn't have a lot of lubrication, like the Scotch 111 or Scotch 150, I mean, if you wind uh, the tape through your fingers, you're going to get, you're going to get oxide, noticeable oxide on your fingers. That's actually normal. You know, that's the way they were when they were new. They were shedding oxide when they were new. It's only later on that they learned how to stop that problem by heat treating. And, and putting them through the calendaring process where you have the heated rollers really make that tape smooth. Those are the basic failure modes that I find, uh, I found across uh, all, the, um, all the different tapes we've used. And uh, it's important to keep those in mind. Uh, they might happen to your tapes.